name is Cherie Buck Hutchison, and I'm a local artist here in Phoenix, Arizona. You're in my studio with me. Welcome. Currently, I have a piece in the Scottsdale Civic Center Library as part of the Breakfast Club 20-year anniversary exhibition. The Breakfast Club was started by John Haddock and Beth Ame Schwartz, and it's been going for 20 years now. So it's truly a celebration. Beth and John started it in order to bring artists together to fellowship and to help each other and to explore art and art places and museums. They go behind the scenes. They organize a lot of activities and, and they go to breakfast. So um, many of us are very grateful to the Breakfast Club because they've helped a lot of us in, in many ways. It's a great place to exchange information or um, ask questions. So um, it's been a really wonderful club for the Metropolitan Phoenix area and it has over 80 artists, maybe over 100, I'm not sure the latest count, but certainly um, it's a great group. So my piece in the show is similar to this in that it has a little bit of a silk photograph overlay. And here's uh, some layers I'm currently experimenting with. I like to use landscape a lot. And sometimes I put actual photographs. These are photographs on silk. So they're actual photographs too, but they're not on paper. So um, sometimes I like to layer different things. But I always use transparent layers. And what that just means is see-through. And then I like to sometimes see how much of the see-through will disappear or how much of it will come back. And um, I'm always about healing and layering. And so uh, I'm interested in roots and I'm interested in organza because they both have to do with healing. Organza is used in American quilt repair and display as a means to... Um, restore that history, and roots, of course, have medicinal properties. So here's a root that I've dug up. It's dandelion root. Um, here in Arizona, the ground is so hard that the dandelions actually, a lot of times, will go sideways. So that's kind of interesting to me, too. So that's a little bit about me, and I'm going to show you a few pieces of work that I've done using transparent layers. What I love about uh, using the layers is because I can bring them together poetically and I'm inspired by poetry I love how poetry uses a metaphor an example of something to talk about something else and in my work I use layers to say something but I also like to bring those two items together so for party of two there's two things there's a tree by the ocean and there's a backyard little dinner party and I'm going to show you a little bit about the piece that I made now, and then I'm going to show you um, how to make some pieces for yourself using a free app you can download onto your phone. Typically, I use Photoshop to experiment with two images to find which ones are going to be compatible with each other. And once I find that, uh, depending on what I'm going to be printing on, I either print on paper or uh, paper and silk. So to do the silk involves printing it on a special printer and sometimes I have to print multiples just to get it nice and how I want it. Then I have to finish the edges because the silk organza frays terribly. So I take a an old tool I have, a soldering iron, and I, I burn the edges. And then they're all brought together in the framing. And for this piece, in particular, Party of Two, I left a little space at the top so that, you know, it's um, a little psychological. The viewer is looking at it, and these pieces can get busy. So it just lets the silk be alone up there and also the print I left a little bit at the top there too so they could exist together and so together they bring something else and that's what makes art and
metaphors and poetry, fun for me, and keeps me engaged in my studio practice. So now let's take a look at our downloaded app, Snapseed, to see how you can make layered images for yourself. This is Vidi, and he's our model for today. He's a Brussels Griffon, and a lot of famous artists have actually favored these kind of dogs, and you'll see him in a lot of paintings by um, an artist named Mary Cassatt. So um, if you haven't seen him, look for him in some of her work when you go to a museum. And uh, he's scruffy, but that's kind of how they are. So of course, first you want to download Snapseed and have that on your phone. And then before you open it, get your pictures that you think will go together and save an extra copy of each. Then go ahead and open Snapseed. So mine has a picture up already. And if I want to change that picture, I just press open. And look who's here, Vinny. He's younger. He's pretty cute. And I don't like this picture because He's sitting on a floor that looks pretty bad. So I'm going to overlay it. So I'm gonna go into tools and I'm going to go all the way down to double exposure. Then I'm going to hit the little square with the plus sign, which means add another. I'm gonna go into recent because that's where I know my photo is. And I like these flowers. So I'm gonna see what that looks like to overlay Vinny with some flowers. And I can pinch with my fingers or expand with my fingers. I kind of want to frame his face, but still cover that area on the floor. So. I'm just going to keep moving it around until I get something that works. And this is better. This is an improvement. You can still see his cute little face. But it's the flowers are a little more see-through than I want. So at the bottom of your phone, there's a teardrop. And that is opacity. And so op opaque means you can't see through it. And translucent, which is what we want, or transparent, um, different types of see-throughness, especially transparent. So we go way down to the left it's we can't even see our image hardly but if we go all the way to the right Vinny disappears so let's try to find something that works in the middle and that looks pretty good and it kind of covers up the issues that we're having we might just bring that flower down a little more and expand a little more that looks better i think i just keep playing with it till you get what you want and oh here's a good one let's take that one so now we're done check mark at the bottom. Now we have our picture. I can crop it if I want or we can just export as is. We can share it to social media. We can open it up in social media and other things to um, share it to a group file, uh, different options, email. We don't want to do that. We get out of that. There's a little X right there. So now I can just hit that twice and that takes you out of tools if you accidentally get in there. Back to export and I'm gonna save a copy. This allows me to change it if I don't like it. I could still see some stuff on the floor so I might use a different picture later when I have more time but you can also export it again and just save a regular one. 
And this modifies your photo. The photo will always be this way if you choose this option. So I saved two, so I'm okay if it modifies this one. And that's it. Now we can go in, open up our photos, and there he is. What a handsome doggy. So now that we're familiar with Snapseed, let's learn a few more tools. I would like to show you our model for our next layered image in Snapseed. So this is Greta the Great, and here's what she originally looked like. I needed her to look the other way. Greta's a sculpture in Fruita, Colorado, and she was named Greta the Great by the local school children. I took a picture of her when I was in the area, and now I want to use my own picture. So the first thing that I want to do is turn her around. So I am going to go down to drama. Oh, and that's going to make her lighter. So before I turn her around, let's do this. So I can do all kinds of things in drama, but I want her to be lighter. So we're going to use this image. So I'm going to hit check mark. Good there. Now I need to turn her around. That is the wrong tool. So let's try Xing out of that. We'll use that one in a minute. But right now I have to find the mirror image. So rotate. And we don't want to rotate her. That's what that would do, which is a fun tool. Sometimes you need it. But right now at the bottom, there's a dotted line with two little arrows and that flips Greta around. Check mark. We're done. Now I want to just skew this a little bit. So I went into perspective and I'm going to hit tilt and I'm just going to for a little bit, move her to the right. And then as I'm done, it fills in the top. So when I'm done, I hit check mark again. Now I'm ready to add my next picture. So go back down into tools like we did before. Go to double exposure. Add a picture with the plus sign tool. And I'm going into recents. I have a window that I took two pictures of. I also took two pictures of Greta. We have to remember to do that. Sometimes Snapseed can lose photos, so always save doubles. So I'm making, I'm, I'm using the opacity tool, the ability to make it more or less transparent. And I want to make that window big enough so that it looks like Greta is looking in someone's kitchen window. That would be a fun day, huh? So that looks good. Let's, I've made it bigger. I want the window to actually look like a window and Greta to fit in it. Might make the window just a tad bigger in order to do that, but I kind of want her claws to kind of be on the windowsill so it looks like she's maybe thinking about coming inside even. So I might just make the window right to the edge of her head. She still has room to fit in. And I think that's good. We're done. I'm going to show you one more tool because as you can see at the bottom, it looks a little dark to look realistic. So we're going to go into the crop tool and the crop tool, one part of it's free, the rest you pay for. So I just use the free one and I'm just going to crop that up a little bit so that it looks a little more realistic. Check. And we're done. So I can undo everything, of course, if I don't like that. Might want to crop that a little bit more. Not happy with that, but there we go. Done again. Now we're ready to export. I am going to save a copy. And I'm going to export it again. Save that I can make changes and I'm going to allow it to be modified. And that's all there is to it. So today we've talked a lot about landscape and metaphor and how separate images can be brought together in layers to create more meaning than they were separately. 
I have one last suggestion for you. Start with perhaps a haiku, which is a tiny poem, and then see what images you can come up with to represent your poem through just images. Thank you for joining me today. I had a lot of fun playing with layered images with you, and I hope that you continue to play with it and enjoy the process. And if you get a chance, please stop by or make time to go see the 20th anniversary celebration exhibition of Breakfast Club at Scottsdale Civic Center Library. It's a wonderful show with over 40 artists and it will be interesting to see all the diverse range of studio practices that are taking place here in the valley. So um, thank you again. You can check me out on Instagram at sheree.buck.hutchison and Sheree is spelled C-H-E-R-I-E. And on the web, it's sheriebuckhutchison.com. Also, I have a piece currently up. It's public art, so it doesn't really have the layered images, but it's another one of my practices that I do at Scottsdale and Oak Street. It's a big blue wing, and um, a lot of people are enjoying taking selfies with it. So um, if you take one, if you want to hashtag it on Instagram, it's hashtag blue wing. Thank you again. I've really enjoyed our time together. And I hope you have too.